Welcome back to Julie, Keeper of My Home. I'm going to do another What We Eat in a Week. I haven't done one for a little while, so I thought it was time. A night or two ago, we had some pork loin. I just roasted that with some onions and peppers and different seasonings. So I wanted to kind of change that up and make a completely different meal with this. Something that was kind of out of the box, new, something we've never had before, so that's what I'm doing. I love to create. So I'm just creating. And this is kind of a fly by the seat of my pants here. This is not planned. I'm just going as I go. So I added a few more onions to this and some peppers. Just going to put those in a pan of olive oil and just kind of stir those up until they're translucent, get them cooked a little bit. And then I'm going to add the pieces of pork loin. I just sliced them about a half an inch thick. Um, whatever I had, I'm just going to fry those in with it. I'm going to brown them on each side. I love doing things like this. I love reimagining meals because a lot of these leftovers that you have, they can make some really great new meals that maybe you've never had before. And I've never actually done this before. It was just something that I thought of in the night because that's when I do my, my, my best meal planning is in the night. I just think up all these different ideas. Now we are going to have some rice with this. So I do have some rice cooking on the side over here. In a bowl, I am adding some cream of mushroom soup. It just, I didn't dilute it with anything except a little bit of milk. I don't have a measurement. I just poured in a little bit just to kind of give it um, a little looser, not so thick um, texture to it. Then uh, I'm going to pour that in to my meat. You can see the meat is browned and we're going to just kind of stir that all up here. I just want to get that all the sticky bits and bobs kind of loosen those up from the bottom so that this sauce, the uh, soup and the milk will just kind of get in there and it'll eat up all of those bits and bobs on the bo bottom of the pan. This always makes it taste so good and adds so much flavor. So I'm just going to get this all stirred around. I love meals like this. I love things that are just created from your pantry, from your leftovers. And that's what's so great about this meal. These are some green beans that we'd canned last year. So those are right off the shelf downstairs in our, um, in our larder. So it's nice to have all of this stuff here handy to have. We don't need to shop at the store. That makes us less dependent on the store. I like that. Now I'm adding a little salt, a little pepper, a little garlic powder, and a little onion powder. This is just going to give it a little bit more flavor. I'm just going to stir this all up and it's done. We're just trying to warm everything up and that's all there is to it. And look how wonderful it looks. And it was absolutely delicious. We'll definitely do this meal again. This is one area of our house that I struggle with. All the seasonings, look at all these seasonings. We have enough to supply the neighborhood, I think. <laughs> he is, uh, Joe is just looking for a particular seasoning. And as he's looking, he's discovering others that he didn't realize we had. <laughs> So he's having fun. This is like definitely his wheelhouse. So he is actually looking for some dill weed and I do believe he has found it. We are going to have some haddock tonight. So let me show you how we make it. I'm making a poached haddock. Now this is my own way of poaching. I say it's poaching. Um, it's not exact to some recipes, but I've done it before and we're going to do it again tonight, but I'm slicing up a lemon here. Um, the lemon gives it a little tart flavor. I've always used lemon because we enjoy it. Um, I think first I'll take some butter and put it in the bottom of the foil pouch that I made. This is real butter. Um, I'm going to use probably three pieces across the bottom. Okay, I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to this. A 
excuse me. I'm going to add some dill weed. And now I'm now going to add the lemon slices. The oven is all set to temperature to cook this. So. Now we'll seal this up. While this is happening, I have a sweet potato in the microwave, just softening up a little bit, enough so that I can peel it and cut it into chunks. This is just a little foil pouch that he made, like a pocket sorts, and it just kind of Just holds. something to hold the juices. Yeah. And the flavor. We usually put it in um, a baking dish with some sides in case any of it juices leak out, which, you know, they generally do. Now we're going to stick it in the oven here. We'll go 350 for 20 to 30 minutes. That should be done. Now that he has the paddock in the oven, we're going to get back to the potatoes. And I am just going to put these in a pan. This is a cast iron pan heated up with a little bit of olive oil. You can use butter, use coconut oil, whatever you want to use, whatever works for you. I'm just going through these pieces and making sure that they're in bite-sized chunks. So we didn't cook them all the way through in the microwave for a reason, because they're going to be cooked here this way. And I, I didn't want them all the way through because then they'd be a little bit mushy. So, All right, so I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, and to mimic the haddock, the seasonings on that, I'm going to add a little bit of dill. We're going to let these kind of brown a little bit and get all those nice little bits in the bottom. I haven't got them up very high. It's like medium, low, medium to low, kind of in between. We're just going to let those cook up and uh, fry up a bit. It's not going to take long. So we'll just wait for that. These have been sitting here. I turned these down because I had a couple things that I was doing, so I didn't want them to burn, so I did turn them down a little bit, but I just turned the heat back up. See how they're starting to brown the little bits are browning? That's what you want it to do. So I like to leave it because the more you touch it, it'll fall apart. And I want to leave these so that they're like nice little browned up chunks. So we're just going to let those sit there. This is a game of patience because you, you kind of want to get in here and stir this, but just let them sit there and they will brown up. Haddock is out of the oven. Look how good it looks. Ouch, I just burned my hand on the pan. Delicious. And the potatoes are done. You can see where the sugar in the sweet potato caramelized. And we also have some green beans right here. These are canned green beans from our storage. They go good with fish. And honestly, we eat a lot of green beans. It's one of our favorites. This is one of the many healthy meals we actually eat. It's very heart healthy and delicious. Joe had his with some brown bread and I did not. I'm trying to stay away from bread. Uh, but this, this is all stuff we had on hand. We are still eating pretty much from our pantry and our freezers. On the next night, we are doing something that I totally made up and I thought would be really delicious. And I will say, please excuse the lighting. We are really working hard to not use electricity. We're trying to go more off-grid, minus the fact that we do have our washer 
that we use. I don't necessarily use the dryer, but we do use our washer. But we would we would like to go solar at some point um, and kind of go off grid. So we're working towards that. Right now, what I'm doing is I have a headlamp on, one of those flashlights that you wear on a headband thing. And I am chopping up some vegetables. Now I have some asparagus. Those are cutoffs that I have. Uh, we use everything. So I use the cutoffs. I just cut up what is good on there and I'm throwing that onto a dish with some tomato slices, some leftover mushrooms that I had. This is some ham that was left over from Easter dinner. Uh, we had thrown it in the freezer and taken it out. We had baked it another night and then we had some still had some leftover. This, this one is actually our son's that he had shared with us. It was delicious. So I'm just chopping that all up. And these are going to be toppings for sourdough pizzas. You see all of those peppers and onions and oh my gosh, it's going to be so good. So I'm just, you know, frying up the peppers and the onions first. Just want them to be translucent. And look at this sourdough. This is my starter. It's just loving life right now. All I did was take pure sourdough and pour it into a very hot oiled cast iron pan. That's the key is make sure the pan is very hot. It's going to be like a flatbread. Now I am going to chop up some pepperoni and uh, get those ready to put on the little, I don't know, we want to call it a sourdough flatbread pizza, I guess. I am adding some sauce. This is Joe's pizza. Now I'm, I'm making three different pizzas. This one is Joe's. He likes sauce. I do not. I'm also going to make a smaller one for our granddaughter, Madeline. She loves um, to have sauce and cheese on hers. But Joe wants all the toppings. He likes a man pizza, he calls it. Let's get all the meat, let's get all the stuff. If he is going to eat some, he's going to eat a meal on his pizza. So that's what he likes. So I'm just adding all the toppings, the pepperoni, the ham. I'm going to add the sauteed vegetables. And that is why I sauteed them because we're not going to cook this because the crust is already cooked. We're just pretty much heating it up in the oven. So I sauteed everything together and just going to cover the pizza in all of the goodness. Now you can use whatever toppings you like as few or as, you know, much as you want to use. You can use kale, you can use spinach, whatever you want to use, uh, different cheeses. Just, I just throw everything. It's kind of like a quiche. Use your leftovers, just throw it all on there. This is some ground hamburger that we had left over in the refrigerator. So I'm throwing that on there as well. It's a great way to use up what you have in your refrigerator. You don't want to go bad otherwise. This is some shredded mozzarella. My husband likes a lot of cheese. So I'm going to put this whole thing in the oven. And that's the beauty of using cast iron pans. Just throw them in the oven, stove top to oven. Now let me show you how I did the um, sourdough. I am just throwing some oil in a pan. This is just olive oil. Now the key is to heat your pan, let it get really hot. Then I'm adding, this is about a half cup measure in an eight inch cast iron pan. I am adding the sourdough starter, pure sourdough starter, nothing in it at all. There's nothing added. It's just, this is how I use up my starter because I have a lot of it. This one, I'm not going to so much do a flatbread style. I'm going to kind of, my husband said, try creating sides to it to see, you know, make sure it holds everything in there. So this is actually my pizza. So I put sides on it. I let it cook thoroughly on the stove top before I added the pesto. I love pesto. I, I'm not a sauce person. So I did add the pesto. Once it was cooked, the heat is off. I'm adding my toppings. I am just putting some of these sauteed vegetables and stuff on here. This is my husband's. Look how full it is. Now I oven baked mine as well. This is what it looks like. My husband's when it came out, it's like a flatbread style. We're just going to slice into that. And oh my word, this, 
I could eat this every day. You have to try this. This is absolutely, hands down, best meal of the week. Tonight we're doing stir fry and chicken. So I'm gonna show you how to make that. And I will say we typically are doing all of this on the cook stove, but the weather's warming up. So the cook stove is not at a high enough heat to cook all of this stuff. So we are doing it on our regular stove. So let's get started. Okay, tonight for dinner, and I know the lighting is a little bit low, but honestly, this is actually the lighting that we use. We use oil lamps at night. And the little flashlight things that go on your head, the little headband lights. What I have here is to my left, I have a cast iron pan and it's on low heat. I actually pulled it off the heat a little bit because I didn't want it to get too, too hot while I was sitting here um, cutting up these vegetables. But I have a little bit, probably two to three tablespoons of sesame oil in that pan. And to that pan, I'm gonna add a few vegetables and some uh, garlic. This is fresh garlic that we, grew in our garden last year and we actually have more growing in our garden now and we'll harvest that in July so I can't wait because we're on our last like two or three cloves so or heads I guess of garlic so it'll be nice to get more and what we don't use for you know the ends or whatever whatever cutoffs I get on any of my vegetables or garlic or any of that we feed to the chickens so nothing goes to waste we turn all of that stuff all those scraps into eggs okay this is a red onion it's just doesn't have to be a red onion if you don't want it to be but this is um, just what I had left over in my refrigerator so that's why I'm using it. I didn't want to let it go to waste, so I'm going to slice this up, cut the slices in half because it's a rather big onion, and I'm going to add that to my cast iron pan. Back on the heat. And then I've got three peppers. These have been washed. And we've got a green, a red, and a yellow. You can add whatever color you want, even if it is just all one color, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be anything specific. It's just what we use when we make this. Whatever we have. I'm just gonna slice these. As I slice them, I'm going to put them in the pan of oil. No particular order, just thinly sliced and thrown in. As far as the amounts that you want to use, I don't have an amount. I am literally just adding enough so that Joe and I can have some for dinner tonight and we'll have some leftover for when we want some for lunch or dinner tomorrow, whatever. That is how I'm doing it. Like I said, all the cutoffs from any of these vegetables, I have a bucket over here to my right, so you'll see me throwing stuff in there. Trying not to waste anything on this pepper. A lot of good stuff on it. Whatever's left into the bucket. On to the next pepper. I know that there's a proper way to cut peppers, but I am just doing it quickly tonight. I love the color, the vibrant color of the yellow peppers. We're just going to get these peppers all sliced up and thrown into the pan. 
All right, so I've got all the peppers and onions, the red onion, but I it really wasn't a lot of onion, so I think I'm going to get another onion and add to it. And I also added the garlic. Um, I just chopped that up, just a really rough chop, put that in there. But I do have some asparagus that I'm going to add to this, so um, I'll cut that up too. But I'm going to scoot over and grab an onion. All right, I have a smallish kind of onion. Just a yellow onion. Just gonna put that, slice it up, and add it to the pan. Nothing fancy, but this stir fry is so delicious, and you can eat it by itself. You can add whatever you like to it. You can eat it over rice. You can eat it over noodles. You can, it would be really good over uh, zucchini noodles. I love those. I like my vegetables. Now this is some asparagus. This is how we store our asparagus in the uh, refrigerator. It's just a canning jar. I cut the ends off of the asparagus, I snap them where they're, they'll break where they're, uh, the woody meets the um, more tender parts. So um, I store them in there with some fresh water and just keep an eye on it and, you know, clean the water every couple of days and add fresh. But these are a couple weeks old and you wouldn't know it. They're just as firm and nice. So we're going to add these. I've washed and that's fresh water. I'm just going to just cut the ends off just a little bit, just tiny pieces off the ends. That's going to be added to the chicken bucket. Now I'm going to cut these in, I don't know, one inch, two inch slices or chops. And I'm going to add it to the rest of the pan. Let's see, get you over here. I'm going to add it to the rest of this, and I did turn a light on. I don't typically use the lights at night, but for video's sake, you need a little more light. So I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit, get this cooking. We are going to add a little bit of a sauce to this, so as far as um, seasoning, I'm going to season the sauce and create a really great taste with that. I just want this to cook a little bit more. We want them, what would you say, al dente, I guess. Not cooked right down, but cooked enough so they have a little bit of a bite to them still. In another pan, Joe is, this is another cast iron skillet, Joe's putting a little bit of garlic olive oil. This is some olive oil that we made ourselves. I had some garlic cloves sitting in there and I let it let them sit for quite a, quite a quite a few weeks actually. I forgot I had it. So they they sat for a long time. He's going to add some bone in in on chicken thighs. And there's four of them. Now these are chicken thighs that I cut off a whole roasting chicken. I have that video that shows how we save money on chicken by using whole roasters and piecing them out. I'll put that video up above so you can see that. And he is going to season these. And this is what he's using for seasoning. It's a smokehouse maple seasoning. This is so, 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 so good. He's just gonna sprinkle that on each one and pan fry these until they're a little bit browned and you just want the outside cooked so just kind of they're going to cook the rest of the way in the oven so you're not worried about them cooking to full uh, temperature you know cook temperature 
You just want them to pan fry nicely so that they're a little crispy. And then we're gonna throw them in the oven. Meanwhile, over here, I am still sauteing my vegetables. And like I said, you can add whatever you want to these. I'm gonna let these cook down and let's go work on the sauce. Okay, for the sauce, I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice. You can add lime juice, you can add lemon juice from, this is just uh, in a container. I'm cheating tonight. Typically, I would use actually, whoops, actual fresh squeezed lime or lemon, but um, Joe's going to be using that for something else, so I don't want to use it up. And I'm also going to add a quarter cup of maple syrup. And I am guesstimating on that. This is real maple syrup, and we get this from our Amish neighbors. And let me see. Get my spoons out here. I'm gonna add, hmm, let's go with half a teaspoon of chili powder. Oops. Oh, with a half a teaspoon of chili powder. I'm gonna put this in here. Chili powder is always good. And I'm going to use about a quarter cup of some red pepper flakes. You can omit these, you don't have to add them. You can add more if you like, depends if you like spicy or not. I'm not a fan of overly spicy, but I do like a little bit. And a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm just gonna give it a little sprinkle. I did add garlic to that. And get this stirred up. All right, let's get this stirred up. Okay, starting to stick on, which I actually like when it does that because it's, there's all those little bits of flavor in there. Time for the sauce. So let's pour the sauce in. Get all of that maple syrup in there. like the best part. And sometimes the seasonings stick to the sides because that maple syrup is so sticky. So I'm just gonna use a spatula to make sure I get all of that in there. Then we're going to coat everything. I almost put slivered carrots in here, but then didn't at the last minute. Next ingredient. This is some arrowroot powder and water. Equal measurements. Two tablespoons water, two tablespoons of arrowroot powder. You can use cornstarch if you like, it will do the same thing. Just a thickening agent. It's gonna thicken that sauce up really nicely. It's gonna get nice and ooey gooey and sticky because it's all that maple syrup. Look at this, doesn't this look delicious? Okay, I'm going to turn the heat off. Another thing that I want to add in here, which you don't have to, if you're not a fan of these, don't add them, but I think they taste really good, is pineapple. This is fresh pineapple that we canned, let's see. Uh, last year, we had gotten fresh pineapples on sale for a dollar each. We bought a couple of cases and each pineapple gave us three pints of chopped pineapple. And we are both pineapple fans. So yeah, this was a, a win-win. Very cost effective. If you go to Walmart, a can of pineapple is about a dollar. We got three cans for a dollar, three jars that I can myself. So savings. All right. Now the heat is off. This is just going to sit here so this pineapple can soak up these juices and heat up. 
final ingredient. A few little sesame peas. You can stir those in. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to because I think they add a little fun factor to any dish. Well, any dish like this, a stir fry. So we're going to add those in. Along with all of this, we are cooking some farro. This is butternut squash and kale. It's like a, like a risotto. This stuff is so, 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 so good. It's become like my favorite. So we're gonna have that with all of this. Chicken is going into the oven. Chicken is out of the oven. Look at this. Doesn't this look delicious? I'm going to check the temperature of this. And you want to go into the meat, not next to the bone, and check the temperature. And it is definitely done. Juices are running clear. So you just always want to make sure your chicken is cooked on the inside. You don't want to eat raw chicken. Look how good this looks. Okay. Now I did put the vegetables in the oven of the cook stove just to keep them on low and warm till this is done. So now that it's done, I'm gonna go get them out. And you can see here, our farro is finished as well. And here we have it. Chicken, farro, and stir fry. Well, thank you for joining me for my what we eat in a week video. I hope you got some inspiration or maybe you want to try some of these meals. If you do, be sure and let me know. And until next time.